So, you got yourself an older Renix era Jeep from uh, 87 to 90, and uh, you'd like to read the computer and see what it's doing. But, you check under the dash, and you find there's no OBD2 port. Well, why is that? <laughs> How are you supposed to communicate with these older trucks, you know? On your newer guys, you just come in here, and you'll find a plug somewhere, and you can just stick your little thing in there and be good to go. Well, no such luck on these old dogs. The Renix era Jeeps are before the times of Chrysler in the future. This is the AMC Renix, Renault, and Bendix um, computer systems. And uh, this truck is before the times of, you know, when the government actually did something useful like standardizing all the automotive connectors so everyone can talk to each other very easily. So with your Renix era Jeeps, I'm not sure about Wranglers, but on Cherokees and Comanches, if you come over to the passenger side, you'll see some diagnostic ports. Under these little yellow caps, you might have a, an entire plastic tray, but you'll take the tray off and take these caps off. And looky there, you got two diagnostic ports here. The larger one to the left is for the ECU, and the smaller one to the right is for the transmission. So obviously if you have a manual transmission, that second port isn't really going to do you much. So, how do you plug in to one of those things? Well, you're going to have to go back in time and hunt to the good old days of eBay. Here we have a snap-on scanner. This old dog. If you've been in the automotive business for a long time, you should recognize this quite easily. The classic snap-on red brick, the MT2500. This old dog will do what we need. So, I got the MT2500. You can also get the fancier version, which like will display graphs of the... Um, the sensor signals which is cool but usually they go for about the price alone as this entire kit would go so i got this with the case and all the connectors and everything i need so with this mt2500 there's a couple things you'll need first in order to plug into the jeep you want to make sure it comes with the regular um connector that'll plug into the back and it's just one of these ports right here all right so that's your main diagnostic port that all the adapters connect to. And that's MT2500-5000. Next up on the list, in order to communicate with your Renix era, you're going to need a Jeep 1 connector, which is MT2500-49. And it looks like this. So that's got the ports for the engine and the transmission. Along with that, you'll need at least one of these red cards. This will let you communicate with all your vehicles of choice. So if you look on them, it'll tell you, you know. You got your troubleshooters, which uh, I think give you like tips and stuff on how to work on it. And then you have the primary cartridge, which actually communicates with the computers. So this is the one you're worried about, is the primary cartridges. So, for the primary, you'll want one of these. A GM Chrysler Ford Jeep, domestic combination through 1999. You don't want the 1999 to like, whatever, 2000 something. Because that one leaves out the Renix era, so you want the older ones. This cartridge is the MT2500-1099. I think there's like a 1098 and a 1096 or something. Any of those will work. You just want to make sure that it covers before 1999, not after. And then you can get the troubleshooter if you want, which I guess gives you information. I've never used the thing, but it's MT2500-2998. So that one's through 1998. And that'll do everything we need. So with the adapter and the proper cartridges, you too can communicate with your old Renix computer system. Neat. Okay, so in case you're curious, this is what the cartridge looks like. So it'll have some, uh, some chips on there. And... Uh, that just kind of plugs in. Now, something that you have to be aware of is that these stickers might be changed sometimes. You might get ones that don't have uh, the original chips. I forget 
what they look like, but there are stickers online that show you what the good ones versus the programmed ones look like. So sometimes you could get like technically bootleg chips. They might still work as long as they're programmed for the right ones. But just make sure it's got the right sticker on there for you. You're gonna take it and you just kind of pop it in there. Once you hear the pop, she's good to go. So, when you get this thing in the mail, there's gonna be a battery pack. It's just a nine volt battery. You take this cover off, make sure you got a good battery in there. And then you get to turn it on, right? And the screen turns on, and oh, look at that, cool. So you can see stuff. And you let go, and you're like, oh God, did I break it? Is it broken? Oh no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. That's just how these things work. You gotta plug it in and connect it to battery power before it stays lit. So, let's hook this up to the, um, the car and see what we can read. You're gonna take your adapter and wiggle it on there. It's a pain in the ass to get both of them to line up sometimes, but I'll push in. Okay, so you're not gonna see anything on the screen yet. So let's turn the, uh, the key to the on position and then we can set this thing up. So I'll turn it to on for basic. Just in the run mode. Okay. Keep alive, battery voltage low. Yeah, whatever. That just means our nine volts low. So, we'll just say yes. So we want the domestic primary cartridge. And here you can choose what vehicle you're running. So you can go General Motors or Saturn, you can do Chrysler, you can do Jeep, you can do Ford, new features, or generic OBD2. We want our Jeep, 84 to 99. So now we kind of need to know the VIN, but for the most part it tells you what some of the numbers mean. So this is an 89. It's got the 4.0. And my seventh digit is an 8. So now that that's all set up, you hit yes. And then you can look at what you want. So you got engine, trans, and ABS. The ABS, you won't be able to read anything unless you have the module. I think the same with the transmission. So we'll do the engine first. We have an automatic transmission with AC. Yeah, connect, okay. And then we can go to data. That's the important part over here. And this will tell you everything you wanna know. But before I go through this, let's start up the engine so you can see what the data looks like in real time. All right, so first up at the top, you can see our RPM. That's, you know, just what the engine is spinning at. You can see your oxygen sensor voltage. So that tells you the raw voltage that it's giving. And over here you can see your uh, injector millisecond pulse width. Now that's really high. It shouldn't be that high. But that's because the uh, oxygen sensor isn't hot yet. You can see we're in open status. Over here, for the exhaust, you'll see this go between lean and rich when the oxygen sensor is heated up properly. So that'll show you that your uh, engine is running properly and actually getting metered by the oxygen sensor. So once it heats up for a little bit, you'll see that change. Um, next, you got your short-term fuel trim. That doesn't adjust until you're in the closed loop. And that just, um, that'll tell you how much fuel the engine is pulling or giving to make it run right. 128 is perfect. Anything higher, it's adding fuel. Anything lower, it's taking fuel away to run perfect. Long-term is just the average that it needs to run. So if you see mine is at 166, that means it's had to give more fuel on average for this engine to run right, which makes sense because I have a stroker. Right under that, you have your MAP sensor voltage. That's the raw voltage, and then you can see what it's calculated to. Now, because the, the, um, the memory reset, it's reading in kilopascals, you can go through the settings and change that back to inches of mercury or PSI if it's more comfortable for you. Underneath of that, we have our manifold vacuum and our barometric pressure. So this shows how much it's sucking at the, uh, the other thing. All right, so you hear that? Now we're on closed loop. So now it's metering. You notice the short term's going down and it's going between lean and rich. So we want that. That, that means that the oxygen sensor is reading properly. It's in, in the middle. Now this is pulling a hell of a lot of fuel to run right. It's something to do with the stroker. But once it's uh, up to temperature, it runs perfectly fine. So you can see it like struggling a little bit and then it recovers. So this is good for seeing what your engine's doing in the background. So after that you have your TPS voltage. This is the raw voltage that's reading. 17% is what it should read when it's closed. On Renix systems you can adjust your TPS. 
So this is useful if you're trying to um, adjust it. And if you notice, it says closed. So if we were to open the TPS, you'd see this number go up, this voltage go up, and you'd see this say partially open or maybe full open or something like that. Next you have your fuel sink. That's just a positive or a negative. I'm not completely sure what that is. And then next we have our coolant and our charge temperature. These are in Celsius. Again, you can change them to Fahrenheit through the settings. So our coolant's 25C, and our charge temperature, which is the air coming in, is 9, 10 degrees Celsius. Next, we have our spark advance before top dead center. That just tells you how much the, uh, the engine is advancing the spark. So that just means that it's running more efficiently. And down here is your knock. Now, this is going to be a, uh, a number between 0 and 255. The lower, the better, because if it's reading a knock, it means that you got some pinging issues or something. So right now, it's not reading anything, which is good. Next, you have your AC switch on or off, which uh, is probably changed by the request. So if there's no request for AC, if you slide the slider, the AC, it might say yes, and then it might tell you that the switch is on, that the air compressor is running. After that, you have your EGR on or off. There are very few times the EGR really comes on. It's at a very specific point that that is supposed to come on. After that, you got your battery voltage, which is 14.4 volts. That's very good. And then we got our prom number. That shows you about everything there that you run on the engine. I like to look at this stuff here. This is the important stuff for running right. Just your loop status and your fuel trims and everything like that. That's the most useful for seeing how this thing's running. So we'll back out of that. And we will go to other systems. So we'll go to the transmission next. And we'll see codes and data for this. So right now, our current RPM for the transmission is zero because it's not running. I don't know what TPS steps is. I haven't actually used this while driving. Next up, you have your lockup solenoid on or off. You have solenoid one, which is on. Solenoid two, which is off. Solenoid three, which is off. The first and second solenoids are for shifting. The second one is the torque converter lockup. You can see your mode right here, which is the power. Uh, I, I always have it set to power. Uh, on the older versions, you could set it to cruise if you wanted, but that just makes it shift earlier. Uh, over here, the brake switch, I guess you can see if it's released or on. And you have the current gear you're in. I'm not sure what the Prindle selector shows. And you got your status, model ID number. So that's about it for the transmission. It'd be kind of useful just to see if the computer's actually telling it to shift where it should, if you're having transmission issues. So that's cool. So besides that, um, that's pretty much everything that this can do as for reading stuff. So the other thing that you can do is check out uh, other helpful guides. I'll show you that with the engine off so you can hear me better. Okay, so I just want to uh, show you the, um, the battery that sits on the side here. If you put a little electrical tape, you can make yourself a little tab so you can pull it out later. So that makes it useful. So you can just jam that back in there and then pull it out when you need to. So we'll put our grip back on and then our settings will save. So now you can see our custom setup. So that's where you can change the useful stuff with our English and metric crap. So let's get you out of the reflections here. So I changed the temperature to Fahrenheit, vehicle speed, mile per hour, air pressure and in inches of mercury and other pressures in PSI. So then you hit no to save that, blah, blah, blah. So if you notice, the other thing you have down here is troubleshooter. I don't use that very often, but it could be quite useful if uh, you don't exactly know what you're doing. Um, this actually will give you all kinds of stuff. So it'll give you code tips or if you get any codes, any symptoms, tests and procedures, technical assistance, and fast track data scan. So this right here, it'll tell you... Um, while the engine's running, what I guess is normal or something, or maybe it explains. Oh, so it actually tells you what everything is. Yeah, injector pulse width, long term fuel trim, map sensor voltage, oxygen sensor voltage, short term. That's nifty. So, in case you didn't know what any of these things mean, it tells you what the, abbrevi the abbreviations are and all that. That's really cool. Technical assistance, you can see abbreviations, body code designations, maintenance lamp reminders, fusible link part numbers, special tools, system overview, technical service bulletins, tip, um, tip organization, vantage power graphing meter. 
tests and procedures, coolant sensor test, fuel pressure test, idle speed adjustment, map sensor test, oxygen sensor test, TPS test, and adjustment abbreviations are used. So let's see what one of these looks like. Okay, so that just tells you if you're in the normal operating temperature range. Hmm. Okay, so for the most part, this will help you test things if you're not sure what they should read. We got um, symptom tips. So if you're having issues like this, it'll tell you all kinds of things. So let's see, like idle speed excessively high. We'll hit yes. So I'll check for vacuum leaks, misadjusted, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it just gives you some helpful tips for uh, what could be issues like that. Long cranking time, no start, stuff like that. That's really cool. Code tips, let's see what that is. Why codes are not available? 86 or 90 Jeep fuel ignition systems do not have ability to create or store diagnostic trouble codes in memory. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so the troubleshooter is just useful if uh, you're kind of new to the system and you want some, uh, you know, some tips. So if you got it, you know, it might be something cool to mess around with, but... There you go, that's just the basic idea of what the uh, MT2500 can do, uh, you know, for your vehicle for diagno uh, diagnosing issues and stuff like that. I really like it when uh, I need to see what the engine is doing, because it helps you learn all about the fuel trims and what all the sensors are doing. So if you're having uh, vehicle issues and you plan on keeping a Jeep for a while, this thing pays for itself in no time, because it'll tell you just about everything you need to know about your truck and what it's doing. So, I highly recommend this thing. You can pick them up on eBay for cheap. Like I said, that kit came with all sorts of stuff I don't even need for under 200 bucks. It's very helpful. So, pick yourself one up. So, I hopefully uh, that shows you what you need to know about your uh, MT2500. Good luck and good diagnosing. Sweet!